professional bodyboarders. It would be dangerous to attempt to duplicate these maneuvers without first developing the expertise. On the edge, a complete look at the sport of bodyboarding today. Highlights from the best of 10 years of Mori Boogie World Championships. Competitors from around the world, the hottest, most spectacular maneuvers, and a close-up look at the incredible performances of Mike Stewart and a career that has seen him capture eight world championships in 10 years. In addition, great athletes, ideal wave conditions, fantastic competition at the Banzai Pipeline, the first annual Women's International Championship, highlights from a memorable landmark event in the sport. And you'll meet the individuals that make up the Mori Boogie team, both in and out of the water, a unique perspective on these great performers. This is the best of the best. The hottest, wildest action from the top pros in the world. The kind of thrill that can only be experienced when you live on the edge.
days I've just been trying to make, uh, make a living doing what I love to do. It's kind of cool because uh, I get to go in the water every day. I get to go to the beach and ride perfect waves, travel around, meet cool people. But um, yeah, I'm hanging in there. I'm still having fun. I'm living the American dream, I think. <laughs> it's pretty cool. My image, I've tried to kind of cultivate it over the years. Um, in college, I got a degree in earth science education. And so I was, a, I was a student teacher in my college years. So I had to be sort of the role model for the kids. And I've always loved to be able to be in a position where I can influence younger people in, in a positive way. And I've always been in, a proponent of no drugs, no alcohol, and uh, leading a healthy lifestyle, getting high on sports like, like bodyboarding. And uh, I, I've tried to carry that over into my bodyboarding career. I, I want to, you know, maintain a clean and healthy image and, and sort of purvey to people that you don't have to do drugs or drink or get into all that kind of crap, you know, to, to, to do well at bodyboarding or, or to, to have fun, to be cool. You, got, you just got to go out there and get high on waves. And, you know, sometimes I get made fun of by my friends, you know, goody goody or whatever, but I don't care. I'm stoked on the, the way I live. and. And hopefully other people will, will follow in my path or at least, you know, try to do the same thing and lead a healthy lifestyle and, uh, and just ride waves and have fun. There, there's so many ways to have fun. You don't need to mess with chemicals and stuff like that. I'm really proud of my career. Uh, I started out, you know, this East Coast kid back 11, 12 years ago uh, when I was 16. and. I started out just riding small waves in Maryland, and, and then I went on to college and uh, continued to compete and stuff, and I always had in the back of my mind this idea that, gee, maybe, you know, maybe just after college I'll take a year off and you know, try my hand at being a pro bodyboarder. Wouldn't that be cool? It's sort of living out my dream, which is great about this country. You can follow your dreams, and so I did it, and it paid off. I, I really couldn't believe it. Um, I've been able to do some great stuff, travel to some neat countries that I never imagined I'd be able to visit and meet some great people and you know, surf waves that when I was a kid I used to look in the magazines at places in Australia and go, man, I, I, someday I'm going to surf there. And I did, I've surfed those places and it's unreal and there's still places I want to go and gee, I hope you know, other people have the opportunity to, to get as much out of the sport of bodyboarding as I have. It's just been an unreal career for me. I don't want it to end. I'm going to die when I have to get a real job. <laughs>
but I like spinning my car out and doing Brodies and pulling the e-brake and <laughs> I don't really want to portray an image. Whatever image comes from being myself is, is I guess, my image. I guess my image is kind of kooky, funny. I guess I'm like a, a young guy image. Coming up guy image, I guess. I don't know. In 1982, the sport of bodyboarding came of age when the first Maury Boogie World Championship event was held at the Bonsai Pipeline on the north shore of Oahu. Since that time, Maury Boogie and the top international pros have made an annual pilgrimage to the pipe for the purpose of battling it out in the legendary surf. And for the next year, the victor wears a singular title, World Champion. Yeah, typically at Pipeline, there's two types of swells that come in, a, a north swell, which tends to close out and, and doesn't really allow you to, to do many maneuvers, and then a west swell, which comes out of the west direction, and that's usually the, the swell direction that, that it can allow you to do the, the spectacular maneuvers like the Rolo and things like that. So mm -hmm. that was my, basically strateg my basic strategy was to stay on that west peak.
every year it's you know it's harder to win it. It was a lot harder this year than it was last few years. So this win's a really big one for me, and I'm really you know really stoked that I won it. In January of 1992, a landmark event in the sport of bodyboarding made its debut on Oahu's North Shore, the Mori Boogie Women's International Championship. For the first time ever, the best women bodyboarders in the world competed in perfect conditions at the pipeline for the biggest prize purse ever offered in a women's competition. And what a competition it was. In this contest, it's going to take, you know, at least pulling in or, or getting more of a line than going straight. So I think that's what really helped me is doing maneuvers. It's very important for me. And I mean, same time as now. Uh, I don't know. I just look at the lead and go for it. I had a lot of lucky. You know, and uh, I think I, I hope to be lucky again in the next heat. So just wait in our concentration and see what happens. Let it go. <laughs> I just I had so much fun just surfing there with four people. Just really great waves. Really. Because the pipeline is too shallow. Yeah. The waves so good right now. I think this one is coming up. I think good ways for the same final and the final. I try to have the biggest wave that I can have. I don't try to, to catch a tube or a barrel and I try to have the biggest wave.
dollars for Richard to be the trophy to her. All the honors are It's, it's a, the competition is a lot stiffer. We like Brazil has just really got, you know, they've got a handful of guys that are just really hot, and uh, there's they're they're just spawning all over the place. It's really a good thing. It's the, um, the international pipeline has done a lot for the sport of bodyboarding, and I'm glad to be a part of it. scary when you're dropping down on a big wave and you're looking at the bottom and you're just hoping you make the bottom turn to get into it and then your next thing you're hoping that you don't get lit by the wave getting into the barrel and then you're hoping you're making it out it's just it's kind of scary but after you do it all and then when, the, when you first go out it's it's scary but then when you catch some waves and you're used to it kind of and you're, you're at home <laughs> call him the chairman of the board. They call him the greatest competitor in the history of the sport. When he paddles out into the awesome surf at the pipeline, all eyes are upon him. Mike Stewart, world champion, a competitor's competitor, one of the pipeline's worst enemies, and a unique individual. Uh, who's what? I came here. 
When I first got into bodyboarding, it was before uh, there was even more boogie boards, before they had softboards. So we used to just ride anything that we could get our hands on, uh, you know, styrofoam, uh, anything. It was, it was a blast, you know, it was fun from the beginning. And I think that initial, uh, the essence that was there originally, I think is still there now, but it's just kind of magnified and I think it's more defined. So it's got a long way to go, but it has come a long way from the, from the beginning. And uh, I didn't think it would get this big or be this popular. But you know, when I was younger, I thought, hey, if, you know, if people are experiencing the same thing I am, you know, with this thing and being totally, totally stoked with it, then it's going to get popular. God, I'm just gonna have, I'm just gonna give these guys like an ample supply of blackmail material here. Fast, intense, hard. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a hell pit. Sideways dredger. Plastic man. <laughs> Said, who said my search the king at pipeline? Not me. For me, it's my, the, my biggest thrill is in big surf and, and uh, heavier conditions, and that's that's kind of where I like to go. Uh, depends on the surf. Ben Severson's hot. He's always right on my tail. He's one of the best guys. Uh, the Quiet Classic teams hot. Uh, Keno McGee's hot. Uh, everybody on the tour is hot. I don't know, they're all pretty good. They're all, on any day, given day, could be, could be anyone. So, they're all pretty much, uh, pretty much a threat, I guess. Uh, Mozart, uh, Dexter Gordon, uh, all kinds of stuff. New age, old age, I don't know. Everything. Everything but country. Spaceship. Go to a different planet and catch unreal 15 to 20 foot barrels of knowing on the whole planet and get barreled for 20 to 30 hours. That's a dream session. Captain Kirk. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Gambling and surf, what a combination. Atlantic City, most radical city I've been. Oh, uh, Brazil. Brazil is the most radical city. I don't like B1, ball ahead, cone head. Okay? <laughs> Hollow, big, thick, pits, all over the place. Hawaiian, 12 feet. Breakfast, I'll uh, start with Cafe Haleiwa breakfast burrito, side order potatoes, and a big, huge four stack pancakes. Garden burger at Mother's Kitchen with a burrito, big one.
Dinner, uh, my girlfriend's spaghetti. Two heaping plates, a whole package full of pasta. <laughs> hey, not all of us take a midnight snack now. Well, I definitely feel that I'm a, I'm a you know, competitive bodyboarder because I enter every single contest that I can to uh, try to do well. But I also think I'm a soul surfer in that it's something that's inside of my heart and it's something I want to do for my heart. So it's not like, you know, I'm just doing it for some other reason. It's really a heartfelt thing, and in my opinion, that's soul surfing. Oh, let's see. Uh, I don't know, 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Radical.